Through a gently rolling Nova Scotia Valley races one of eastern Canada's swiftest streams, the Gaspereau River. For the past 200 years and more, the men who live along its banks have practiced one of fishing's oddest and most productive rites of spring. Each May, the herring swarm upstream to spawn in the Nova Scotia lakes. The fishermen farmers construct barriers at strategic points to slow the river waters with large square rigged nets poised on long poles above them. When a school of fish is spotted, down goes man, up come fish. A good day's catch may mean 50 or 75 barrels full of fish, worth 10 or 12 dollars a barrel. As with all commercial fisheries, small and large, a Dominion government fisheries officer periodically comes to inspect the catch. He must make sure enough herring are allowed to pass upstream to spawn and replenish the species. The fish are salted as fast as possible to keep the flavor prime. Pickled for export, most of the tasty Gasparo herring catch goes to the West Indies, where it's regarded as a delicacy. And so spring and their own ingenious fishing craft bring a handsome profit to the apple farmers of Nova Scotia's Gasparo Valley. somebody fishing somewhere in Canada. The thermometer may read 40 below zero, but they're going fishing at God's Lake in northern Manitoba. The winter anglers are Canadian Cree Indians who hack their way with ice chisels to the near freezing water. The fisherman puts a piece of wood called a jigger down the hole and works it along beneath the ice by pulling a rope back and forth. At the right distance, his partner digs it out, and they string a hundred yards of net under the ice between the two holes. With their dogs, the Indians work a 300 square mile area of northern lakes. Their catch includes trout, pickerel, and whitefish. They have to work fast to extract the fish entwined in the net and replace the net before it's frozen solid. If the dogs are lucky, they may get a fish break right on the job. It's not the easiest way to fish, but the 6,000 commercial fishermen in the area earn between three and four million dollars every year, and they earn it the hard way. Nimble hands clean the fish on the spot, and it's quick frozen almost as fast as it's gutted. When the sled is loaded, they waste no time setting out for the base at God's Lake. Here, the fish are packed for shipping 300 miles south to Riverton, Manitoba. Sorted, iced and boxed, the fish are ready to be flown out by the veteran bush pilots who work on Operation Flying Fish. Canada's 
Colorado's national parks in the Rocky Mountains are a perfect resort for man and fish. And especially for man in pursuit of fish, packing in over shaded mountain trails to the remotest lakes. But wherever possible in Canada, what man takes in sport, man and nature seek to replenish. In most provinces, the Dominion government maintains fish hatcheries. Largest of all is the trout hatchery in Jasper National Park, Alberta. A million young fish a year graduate from the hatchery, which has been operating for nearly 50 years. Rainbow, Cutthroat, Eastern Brook, Dolly Varden and Splake are some of the most popular varieties. The fisheries experts know every lake and stream for miles around and select fish of suitable age and variety for each body of water they've studied. The elaborate raising of all these young trout pays off for the sport fishermen and tourists. More than 120 lakes had no fish in them at all until the hatchery stocked them, ready to take the fly. Now every fisherman, young and old, can be assured of a good day's sport in marvelous scenery and also of the day's limit, 10 to every fisherman. Man works with nature to improve the vacation potential of Western Canada's national parks. Saners head out to meet the swarm of sockeye salmon coming in for the annual spawning run up the Fraser River. Men and boats make the trip every season, but the year 1958 is a special one. After 20 years spent laboriously studying the habits and life cycle of the Pacific salmon, fishery scientists have predicted the biggest catch on record. As the huge and costly purse net is hauled in, the crew wait to see if the scientists are right in their prediction. Pacific salmon are Canada's most valuable fish. An international commission regulates the hours of fishing for Canadian and American boats who share the ocean crop. And this year there's a record catch, all right. 15 million fish are taken, worth 80 million dollars. It's a good day's fishing, and a good season's fishing, for Western Canada's multi-million dollar salmon industry.